This is Chris Manick, Peanut Butter Wolf, and you are looking at what's in my boxes. Wild child, known to pick up a slack, known to pick up a whack, MC straight by the map. Asking us why you rap, cause I might tightly strap you in the seat till you want to trip straight to the boom bag. Uh -huh. The specials record, I mean, I for me, like in high school, I was totally uh, idolized them and I idolized the lead singer. I had my hair cut like him. Prince Jammy and Yellow Man, they were the, kind of the first reggae artists that I found out about like in the mid 80s. And I actually was able to see Yellow Man in 87. It almost seems sacrilegious to buy albums of reggae though, because the whole culture is like based on 45s and singles and stuff, you know? I mean, it's great that a lot of that stuff's getting reissued, you know, the early mid 80s stuff. I think, yeah, I mean, most of the stuff I pulled, I'm noticing is more 80s. Like this Raw Power, this was like a punk record that um, my good friend of mine had growing up, and I never had it. They were more like, that kind of growly punk, I don't know, like, you know, the, <laughs> the gravelly stuff. I was going through kind of the, the Clarence Soul section. First I pulled up this Jermaine Jackson, then the Janet and the Michael. I wasn't trying to just go with the Jackson theme, but like after a few of them I was like, wow. Stranger in Moscow, that was kind of like mid-90s when I stopped really listening to Michael Jackson and then after he passed away, I like, got more familiar with all, you know, the later stuff as well, and I really like that song. But I, that being said, I don't, I'm sure these remixes aren't going to be any good, but I'm just really curious anyways. Lakim Shabazz is uh, one of my favorite rappers like from the well early 90s, but this, this is all like unreleased stuff, so. I have no idea what it's going to be like. They go against, they never win, they get dock seated. Lyrics hit you so hard to think you had a shot treatment. This, uh, this group, the lead singer of the group, was my math teacher in college. <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends that was in the class with me, he was like, our teacher looks like the lead singer of the Blasters, you know. And we were asking him one day if he was going to teach summer school, and he's like, oh no, my band's on tour. <laughs> So this is a Jeff Barrow's side project. He asked me to come meet him here for an in-store they were doing, and I was really blown away. So I bought the CD and I bought the 12-inch vinyl, but they didn't have the album at the time, so I'm grabbing it now. I think this is like really like powerful, solid stuff. And this is one of Ariel Pink's records. I was walking down the street one day and I see this guy wearing an Ariel Pink shirt. And I'm like, oh, where can I get one of those shirts? And he's like, oh, well, I'm Ariel Pink. And... So I bought all, of, all the stuff he had, but he didn't have this one at the time. And this is just something I've never had on CD, but I've always had on vinyl. Egyptian Lover was one of the first concerts that I went to in 85 and my mom dropped me off. This was before cell phones. I went there and it was sold out so I had to wait like till the concert was over for her to come pick me up. He was literally like one of my idols growing up, him and, and Prince. This is Prince's like really early works. In high school like I, I um, I took my 501s and I dyed them purple, you know, in honor of Prince, and people thought I was like, whatever. Tangerine Dream. I have a lot of their vinyl records, but I, I was just curious to see like what someone's idea of like their greatest songs are. Moments, one of my favorite groups. Super, super underrated, I think. Do you have an 8-track player? Actually, I do, but I never listen to these. I just collect them. <laughs> this is a uh, real to real. I couldn't believe you guys had this for Herb Alpert Rise. This was one of the only things that my dad and I both liked.
This uh, Sly and the Family Stone Fresh, I, I discovered this in like the late 80s when people started like buying old records to get samples from. With Sly, I mean, you could find samples, but it, it's just really good music just to listen to. This is a, you know, really hard to find Bob James record. I've never seen this on a track. So I went and saw Bob James live and I, I said, hey, uh, he did so great, but why didn't you perform Nautilus? You know, in, in hip hop, Nautilus is a song that was sampled for Beats to the Rhyme by Run DMC and um, Wu-Tang Clan used it for um, Daytona 500. Kiss the pyramid, experiment with high explosive. A slap box with Jesus, Lee Sachin Joseph. And he said, oh, Nautilus, that's... It's interesting, yeah, that, that was a studio record. I would never do that live. Basically, when I go record shopping, I usually just pull a bunch of stuff out and then I'll go through it and kind of narrow it down. Today, I don't know how much narrowing down I'm gonna do. This is Pure Instinct's first thing, I think. I grabbed some newer stuff, some Soft Moon, Tame Impala. This is another uh, Roll the Dice purchase. This is a song called We Want Print. This is uh, Animal Collective, Dame Punk's remix. This is Two Shorts, really early demos. I grabbed a couple of these. These are, I mean, I also just, uh, Kind of 70s this, I don't know what it is, but it says that it's like members of Kraftwerk. Washington has a sample that Madlib used. Uh, it was one of my favorite. This stuff out of their way. Should work here. Phil Laswell, Jumetta Rose, nice price, $2.99. Brian Auger, you can't it's another R.L. Pink, Hunter Graffiti. Cure demos. Um, Sergio Mendes is. Rattles I grabbed from my brother. He's this like. This was more or less just kind of taking a risk. Tonetta is also. Like Salem. Gunga Sufi, How to Dress Well. This B movie was on a compilation. Some more new stuff, DuckTales. Agent Orange, couple Prince things. Zamper, Dudley Perkins. Lonnie Liston Smith. Some more moments. More Lonnie Liston Smith. Bob Reggae, like kind of classic seven inches. Some of them. I already have some of them I don't. This, I don't know what it is, but it looks all right. I have to carry them over my head. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Jacob Miller, Wayne Jarrett. And this was just a classic when it came out. I, you know, I, I have this record at home somewhere. Beba! 